All right, everybody, I hope you're enjoying the extended period of fellowship because we're running into some technical difficulties here. The Risdens are with us, which are, uh, he's, uh, Chris Risden is our man in Japan. <laughs> Missionaries to Japan, uh, carrying the word of God to another nation, and my goodness, that's, that's difficult enough as it is. But he's here with us today to share what the Lord's doing, and uh, he's got a message for us, and hopefully we can get uh, his PowerPoint message up. But I'd like you to welcome Chris Risden. Good morning, everybody. My name is Chris Risden, and I know a number of you, maybe some I, some of you I've never met before, but my wife, Megumi, and I are missionaries in Japan uh, with an org organization called TEAM, the Evangelical Alliance Mission, and uh, we've been there since 2009, so about 14 years now, and um, yeah, this church has really uh, been a great supporting church for us over the years. We're really, uh, really thankful to all of you and thankful to the Lord for keeping us in Japan, you know, all these years and really, really blessed. And uh, we have uh, three daughters. Oh, thank you. We have three daughters, um, uh, Rachel, who's our oldest. She's 18 and she'll be starting at Liberty University in, uh, we'll take her there next month. So, which is hard to, hard to believe, but um, we have another daughter named Sarah. She's 15 and our youngest Hannah is 13. So, they would be here today, but they're on their way to camp in uh, Virginia. So, and we work in a uh, area of Japan called Nagano. Oh, okay. So let's see. So, the second slide there. Uh, Japan is made up of four main islands. Um, the largest one is uh, Honshu, which is where Tokyo is and Osaka. Um, Nagano Ken is right in the middle of the main island, and it's a it's an area known for a lot of natural natural beauty. There's beautiful mountains there. And um, it was famous for 25 years ago, they had the Winter Olympics there in, in Nagano City. Um, and we, we uh, live in a city called Matsumoto, which is, um, uh, it's, a, it's about two and a half hours northwest of Tokyo. And it's a castle town. So back in the day, Japan was kind of broken up into uh, smaller areas where uh, daimyo and they had rulers of the different areas before Japan was united. And um, so Namatsumoto was kind of a, a key town at that point in Nagano and it was Shinshu at that time. But um, so they have a beautiful castle there. It's 400 years old. Um, it's made of all wood and uh, just re really beautiful. It's one of the uh, four national treasure castles in Japan, actually. There it is. And there's a moat around it and uh, really, really cool. So, and so that, that's who we are and where, where we're serving. Um, right now, I'd just like to share why we're in Japan. And for that, I'd like to look in God's word uh, in Matthew chapter 28, Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. There's the the passage there, and I will go ahead and and read that. It says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I think all of us at some point or another have made appointments that we just couldn't keep for whatever reason. Maybe... Uh, we weren't feeling well, maybe a family emergency came up, maybe we were too busy, uh, maybe we lost track of time. Probably the best excuse, maybe the mother of all excuses, uh, good excuses, would be somebody died, like I died so I couldn't make the appointment. That's a pretty good excuse, right? And even the most cold-hearted of persons would uh, accept that, um, you would think, so. But... If we look at looking at this passage, we see that the 11 disciples, 
At this point, Judas had already uh, committed suicide, so he wasn't around any longer. But the 11 disciples met Jesus at this unknown mountain in the area of Galilee. And uh, Jesus had set up, he had prearranged this meeting. And if in Matthew 22, 30, I'm sorry, 26, 32, Jesus gave the disciples a hint of this meeting actually before he went to the cross. He said, but after I have risen, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. So not even death could keep Jesus from keeping this appointment. You know, he was, he's alive and well. How did the disciples react when they saw the Lord? In verse 17, it says that they worshiped him, but some doubted. By this time, Jesus had appeared to all of his uh, 11, 11 key disciples, including Thomas, who originally doubted his resurrection. So it's likely by this point, all their doubts had, had faded away for at least the, the 11 disciples. So it's likely that at this point in time, um, there was probably other followers of Jesus at this, at this meeting place in Galilee. And 1 Corinthians 15, 6 refers to a time when Jesus appeared to more than 500 of his disciples at one time. And this could be that time. We don't, we don't know that for sure, but it's a possibility. And the fact that Matthew's gospel inc openly includes the doubts of his disciples, of his followers, gives it a great ring of authenticity, right? The word of God is not a, it's not religious propaganda in any way. It honestly deals with the doubts of God's people it honestly deals with God's people as they are, warts and all. And we see several amazing truths in the remaining verses of this passage. First of all, in verse 18, we see the all-encompassing authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, then Jesus came to, to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Over the centuries, there's been some great empires uh, in world history. There's the Persian Empire, the Roman Empire, the British Empire, and many others. And the rulers of these empires had great authority. At one point in history, it was said of the British Empire that the sun never sets on the British Empire. That's how far flung the empire was all over the, all over the world. But today, you know, we see all of these empires have Turn, crumbled. They've turned to dust. They had great power, but it faded away. And none of these empires ever came close to having the authority that we see the Lord Jesus Christ has. And there's no area in all of God's creation that's not under Christ's authority. His authority stretches from the highest heaven to the lowest earth. Only a matter of days earlier, Jesus suffered the agony and hum humiliation of the cross. He went there for you and me. Now, God the Father has exalted his son above all thrones, powers, and authority. He's humbled no longer. On the basis of this authority, Jesus gives his disciples this command in verse 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. And the clauses that follow that tell us how this command is to be carried out. These disciples are to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And you see the Trinity there in a clear way um, that's revealed in the, in the New Testament. What are these disciples of Christ to be taught? They're to be taught everything that, I, that Jesus had taught the disciples. And this full command is called the Great Commission. And it was given to Jesus's first disciples, but the command also applies to all disciples that would follow them, including you and I. Go and make disciples of all nations. That's why Megumi and I serve in Japan. That's why missionaries go all over the world to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ because of this, this command, go make disciples of all nations. 
I can imagine that most adults here today, if we're honest, have been pulled over at some point uh, for a traffic violation. You don't have to raise your hands or anything, but I can imagine that most of us have ex had, that, had that experience. What if you get pulled over and when the officer shows his badge, you realize that it's a plastic toy badge, like the kind you used to play with when you were a kid. You would tell the quote unquote officer, sayonara, and then drive off, right? <laughs> That's your Japanese word for the day, Say sayonara. not sayonara, but sayonara, sayonara. This person has no authority but his own, and therefore you're not obliged to obey him. Because the Lord Jesus is the maker and sustainer of all creation, because he lived a sinless life, because he died on the cross and was resurrected on the third day, he has authority over every creature in heaven and on earth. Each of us has the unbelievable privilege to go and make disciples of Christ. This could be going to the other side of town or it could be going to the other side of the world. We are partners with Jesus in this great commission. And what a privilege, what a privilege that is. And then in verse 20, Jesus gives his disciples this amazing promise. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. In a matter of days after Jesus uttered these words, Right before the apostles' eyes, Jesus ascended to the Father's right hand from the Mount, Mount of Olives. No doubt this promise was ringing, ringing in their ears as they went out in the power of the Holy Spirit and proceeded to turn the world upside down for their Lord with the power of the gospel. As you and I go and make disciples of all nations, Christ's authority and his presence go with us. We are never, ever alone. The prophet Daniel gives us an amazing vision of the coming kingdom of God in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. At this time, every person and every nation, including Japan, will worship the everlasting king. And here's how the vision went in the words of Daniel. In my vision at night, I looked... And there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshiped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Praise the Lord for the privilege that each of us have in helping to bring men, women, boys, and girls into this everlasting kingdom. What a, what a privilege that is. So now I've touched on who we are, where we're serving, why we're serving there. Now I'd just like to touch on uh, some of the things that we're, we're doing in Japan. Uh, first of all, we're working with two different churches. Uh, one is called Abundant Life Church, uh, which is the primary church we're working with in Matsumoto. Then there's another church called uh, Azumino Family Chapel. And uh, these are two sister churches that were planted by uh, the same missionary couple. There was a missionary couple named Pat, uh, Cal and Pat Junker, who were missionaries for 50 years in Japan with team. And they, they planted uh, six churches in the Matsumoto Valley. And we're working with two of those churches today. Um, and over the years, we worked with the, uh, two of the Junker sons and their wives in the ministry. And uh, it was a joy to, to work with them. And yeah, just over the last few years with the pandemic, it's been a really kind of a weird time, I guess, all over the world. Um, and a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of hard things have come out of that, certainly. One silver lining, however, in the pandemic was uh, the use of Zoom, you know, for better or for worse, I guess. 
but uh, Zoom allowed us to uh, link the two churches together. Uh, both churches are without a pastor right now. So twice a month, uh, the two churches have uh, joint services, and we take turns basically uh, leading that, and then the other church will have it have the service on Zoom, and um, so it it kind of helps us to, uh, I guess, multiply the ministry a little bit uh, with that technology, and we're really, really thankful for that. So that's one one good thing that's come out of, uh, you know, this difficult, difficult time. And both churches uh, are on the same preaching schedule, actually. We share, you know, different uh, men in the church will speak, and we kind of rotate between the two churches. And also, uh, some of the leaders of the churches meet regularly for collaboration and uh, just to encourage one another. So that's been that's been a great blessing over the last few years to see the the two churches kind of working working closer together. Uh, some of the ministries we have uh, as far as men's ministry, we recently started a uh, monthly uh, prayer and uh, breakfast time. Uh, I hear that every week, every Saturday, there's a men's breakfast here, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to get in on that. I think, um, but. Uh, yeah, we meet once a month to, to pray with one another, encourage one another. So that's really been a, a blessing that's helped, helped um, to kind of build our camaraderie and uh, just, to, um, just to spend time with one another. It's been, been wonderful. Definitely in Japanese churches, the vast, really the vast majority of believers are women. So men are uh, not, not so common. So it's definitely an important um, area of outreach for sure. Also, uh, Megumi is really involved in, heavily involved in women's ministry. So the ladies meet uh, once a month for, or not once a month, once a week for Bible study and prayer time. And uh, that's been great to see how the Lord's used that. And also she's gotten involved in um, basically a really gospel-centered uh, step program, it's called. It's like a mentoring program that she helps to mentor other women. Like she received mentoring and training in that. And now she's uh, meeting with other ladies to, to mentor them. So she's really, uh, that's been, been a great, uh, that's something that's occurred over the last few years. That's been, been a real blessing. Also in uh, 2021, uh, we started a uh, junior senior high group group at Abundant Life Christ Church. And um, so basically we'll meet once a month uh, with the kids for, you know, we'll eat together and have activities and, and uh, a Bible study or somebody will share a testimony, things like that. So that's been great to, to gather the kids together like that and to be able to pour into them, uh, you know, spend time with them and share with them about God's word. Also, um, during this, we were basically in this term for three and a half years and during that time, one of the one of the real privileges was to um, we baptized five people at Abundant Life Christ Church, which was just just a real. Uh, we just praise God for His grace in that. Like you know, it was it was a dark time. Like you know, having to meet online here and there and things like that, and you know, kind of some of those things were certainly discouraging or hard to deal with. But just the fact that we were able to baptize these five believers was uh, just just wonderful, uh, God's grace. Uh, actually, really, very shortly before we came back to the United States, we uh, baptized a woman named Ed Ediko-san, and um, she moved, she's Japanese, she moved back to Japan, she spent about 20 years in Seattle uh, with her family, and they all, all moved back to Japan, and um, yeah, I think you know, she she knew the Lord, but she didn't really have a lot of knowledge about the Bible and uh, maybe wasn't so clear on some things. And um, But basically, she met with Megumi and I after a service one week, and, you know, it was, it was clear that she was convicted about, you know, um, basically her need, her need for a Savior, and, and um, she really felt that. And uh, we started meeting with her, um, yeah, maybe about a month or so before we came back to America. And uh, she got baptized uh, of, like two or three weeks before that. So that was something that, you know, the Lord just uh, worked. It has nothing to do with us. It was just an opportunity to uh, to disciple this woman and 
and, uh, you know, just have this opportunity to baptize her. Also, um, there was a couple named uh, Hotaka and Mami, and um, they were actually dating. Uh, Mami-san was a believer, but Hotaka-san wasn't. And uh, it was really encouraging to us that she was willing to wait, like, until he did come to know Christ. Like, it would have been easier for, easy for her and definitely a lot of, you know, she was kind of getting up there in years a little bit too. And it would be easy for her just to go ahead and marry, you know, without him knowing the Lord. And, but we were really pleased that she was willing to wait and he did come to know Christ. And, um, we were able to, uh, baptize them together, uh, one Sunday. And that was uh, just a tremendous thing. Also, uh, there was a gentleman named Sato-san, um, who had been coming to the church and he was diagnosed with cancer. Um, and uh, so basically in, in the last maybe couple of months of his life, he came to know, came to know the Lord. And um, uh, we, we had the privilege to, to baptize him um, not too long before he died, actually. Um, and uh, normally when we baptize, we, we do it, you know, immersion baptism. Um, but he couldn't get in the water, basically. So we had to kind of uh, don't tell anyone, but we had to kind of do the uh, sprinkling uh, with him. But uh, anyway, so we, we were able to baptize him uh, at that time. And um, just, you know, it was great to see him come to know the Lord before he uh, went to be with Jesus. So. And also another young lady named Satoko. Uh, she had grown up in the church, actually, and uh, moved away. But uh, she moved eventually moved back and... Um, and uh, we were able to uh, baptize her as well, uh, same day as Sato-san. So just, we were really thrilled uh, with these opportunities for sure. Also, uh, there were t a couple of weddings actually during the last few years. Um, the church, Abundant Life Church hadn't had a wedding in over 20 years, I guess, something like that. But um, actually, uh, Hotaka and Mami, the couple that was baptized, uh, uh, I was able to marry them, and uh, I think there was a picture there. I had the face shield on. It was during during COVID and stuff. So, um, but uh, that was great to be able to do that. And another couple um, named Hiroki and Akko, uh, they were married um, in January of uh, 2021, and that's that's a picture of them with our oldest daughter Rachel. So that was a joy to be able to. Uh, basically meet with them before the wedding and, you know, kind of doing, doing some wedding counseling and to be able to, to marry them was a real thrill. Also, we had uh, some funerals as well. So all these kind of big life events, I guess. Um, Sato-san, the man that um, was baptized uh, before he, he died, uh, we had a funeral for him. Uh, also a gentleman named uh, Kumagai-san, um, who was a longtime member at the church, uh, he passed away, um, and we were able to uh, do, do his funeral. And also, um, Hiroki and Akko, the couple that got married, um, they had a 20-week-old baby that, you know, died. Um, so they wanted to uh, do a service for the child, and I, it was a great, great opportunity to to kind of come alongside them in their grief and to be able to do that. And it was a really powerful thing. And definitely for their families as well, it was really, uh, really important. None of them uh, know the Lord yet. So it was a great, great testimony. And it was really encouraging at the church to see all, you know, many people helping out with these, uh, with these funerals in different, different ways. So that was, that was a real encouragement to us. Also, just uh, some community outreach uh, opportunities we had. We had a, uh, around Christmas time, we had a wreath making um, time, and we were able to invite, you know, invite people from the community, and people invited their friends, and um, yeah, we did a gospel presentation uh, around the Christmas story, and um, so that was a, a great opportunity to share Christ's love. And um, actually, that was initiated by. Uh, Hiroki and Akko, the couple that got married, and 
Um, it's really great to see that, like just believers kind of initiating different things and coming alongside them uh, in that. It was a great, great chance. Also, we spent some time with um, a young lady named Kai, Kai Chan, um, and her family. There's a picture of them there. And um, yeah, I taught her when we lived in her neighborhood actually a while back, I taught her English. And um, yeah, she, uh, maybe the last time we were here, I shared that uh, she got she got pregnant um, before she was married. And um, the beautiful thing is, you know, many people choose abortion in, in Japan. It's not even like a, uh, like a big issue like it is in America. It's just kind of like an under the table kind of thing that's really common. And, um, but she chose to, uh, keep her baby and, um, um, even like her mom, like Megumi had met with her mom actually when she found out she was pregnant and the mom was pretty much thinking, you know, you know, abortion, you know, you're going to end this pregnancy, right? I mean, it was kind of like a, you know, duh. Like, why wouldn't you do that? You know, it was, it was like that. But she um, she chose to keep her baby, and that's that's her child there, uh, this little boy and uh, her husband. Um, so we were able, able to meet with them when they came back to the area uh, during, the, during uh, the New Year's holidays. So that was, it was great to be able to meet with them, and hopefully we can do that, do that again in the future. Also, I, missionaries are always looking for ways to, I guess, connect the word of God, the gospel to the culture where they're living. Um, and um, a few opportunities we've had to do that. Um, one, usually around uh, November, there's like a, it's called Shichigo-san. It's for children that are seven, th uh, five and three. Um, usually for girls, I guess. Um, they'll go to the local shrine, the Shinto shrine, uh, to be blessed by the priest. And this is really common throughout Japan. And, um, but basically at the church, we, we decided to have a uh, children's blessing around that time where uh, kids could come and it was a kid-oriented service and we were able to pray with them and share a simple uh, message, you know, message, and uh, kids could like wear their traditional garb if they wanted to. Or, but uh, that was just a way to be able to kind of uh, connect the the church with something that's in the culture and kind of redeem it, I guess. You know, uh, so we were able to do that. Also, um, in Japan, in January, usually toward the end of January, there's a uh, coming of age ceremony for for young people in Japan that uh, just turned 20. So they'll basically go and um, they usually have these ceremonies and all over Japan, at, you know, uh, the government runs those and like girls will get dressed up in kimonos and really, really decked out. <laughs> it's kind of a special time uh, for young people. And at the church, we had a kind of a time to celebrate our, our teenagers, you know, our girls that were in that uh, kind of uh, range of, of age. So we are able to, to do that at the church also. And finally, we have, um, in our church, we have a, it's called a bone closet, um, which sounds kind of like, ooh, you kind of spooky, I guess, right? But um, basically a big question that Japanese people have is uh, where, or who's going to take care of my uh, remains after I die, my bones? Uh, uh, I think, 99.9% .9 of people in Japan are cremated uh, after they after they die. So the usually the family takes takes the bones and um, they you know they might have a bury them at a cemetery or whatever. But um, that's a something that um, every Japanese person kind of it's a concern. Like who will take care of my remains? And that that kind of goes toward. Um, the deep Buddhism in Japan, that uh, after somebody dies, there's a lot of, um, usually people will have a Buddhist funeral, and there's a lot of uh, kind of superstition about, like, after they die, you know, the, the person's spirit, like, is kind of still, like, out there, kind of, like, hovering around and not really at rest, things like that. So usually people, 
in the family, they'll have different memorials on on set set days and like maybe uh, I think it's like what is it thirty nine or forty something days after the funeral. There's a certain memorial, and then um, seven years and uh, other things where basically you're trying to um, kind of make sure the person's spirit is uh, satisfied and content out in the netherworld. I guess that's that's basically the thinking of. Uh, that's really common in Japan. But basically, we have this bone closet to be able to, uh, and you see it in the, the background there, that we can keep people's remains in the in the closet and um, in the different cubbies, I guess, cub, you know, a little closets. And um, uh, it's a great opportunity to be able to minister to the family, ex especially. Like, uh, there I'm with... Um, this is Kumagai-san's uh, sister and his really close friend that they'll like come back to the church um, to kind of visit, I guess, visit his remains, I guess. And, um, and actually we've kind of pushed like, uh, especially around Easter time, like we invite them to come back and like, we'll share about Christ's resurrection, obviously, but we'll also say something about, you know, the, some the people that are, that have passed on and their remains are in the closet and to be able to basically share with them the love of Christ and the hope of the gospel, uh, that, uh, you know, their Kumagai son, you know, his remains are there, but he's with Jesus. So, uh, he's in a, he's in a great place. Um, so those are great opportunities to, to be able to connect with the culture and share the love of Christ. Also, um, you know, for missionaries, uh, you know, we like to share these uh, great stories about what God is doing and these success stories, I guess. But uh, during this last term, we had a couple of really hard losses. Um, so I, I can share that with you. Um, one one loss that was expected, our coworkers, uh, David and Naho, they they actually moved, moved away. We had been working with them for about seven or eight years. So that was hard to see them go, but they moved closer to where uh, Naho's family lives in another part of Japan. So that was an expected loss, but two unexpected losses. Um, we had a, a church plant. It was kind of like a fledgling church plant. We would meet every week and, uh, for praise and worship and Bible study. And, um, I don't know, it probably wasn't like, it wasn't an independent church at that point. It was kind of still in process, but, Basically, one of the one of the leaders of that church plant one week confessed to us that um, there was a, a moral a moral lapse in his life, and um, he he and his wife were actually missionaries, and so he had to step step back from the leadership, and they had to leave leave the ministry, um, and I think the church plant in some ways there were some kind of relational dynamics that were under the surface that were kind of hard to grasp, I guess. And like, so it, it wasn't on such uh, solid footing maybe. And I think this, uh, this situation with this leader really um, kind of was a really hard thing. And it basically our, the church plant kind of cratered. So that was a really difficult thing to, to go through. Um, also, um, there was a pastor that we had been working with for many years. Uh, he was the pastor at Azumino Family Chapel for about 20 years. His name is Koi Wai San. That's, that's him in the picture there. And um, basically, I think he really kind of burned out. Like, he was really exhausted. And there were some things that basically some of the ways that he dealt with people was not healthy, like in... Uh, kind of dealing with people in anger and like he kind of had some issues with that. So basically he, we had um, the, the leaders at the church had him kind of take a step back and um, kind of uh, meet with a counselor and things like that, take some time off to, to recharge. And um, sadly he, he decided to leave the ministry. Um, so that was, that was a hard thing to deal with as well. You know, for, for many years, we had worked side by side and um, 
now he's no longer part of the ministry. And actually, like, even to visit him, like, he basically says, like, uh, you know, don't come around. Like, um, that was that was really painful. <laughs> um, I think it's just kind of painful for him to, like, be reminded of what, you know, what his ministry was. And, you know, um, so that's... So hopefully in the future we can reconnect with him, but um, right now it's it's been kind of difficult. So so those are some those are some difficult difficult things we've experienced. Um, just in closing, just to share some prayer requests uh, with you, um, if you can pl- pray for a spiritual breakthrough in Japan. Japan is an incredibly modern country, but in reality, it's one of the most unreached countries in the world. For the gospel, um, less than one percent of the population uh, is Christian, and maybe the like the statistics would say one percent, but they would throw any group that claims Christianity into that: Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses. So, in reality, it's not you know not that high. So, please pray for spiritual breakthrough in Japan. Also, you can pray for the growth of the churches, the churches that we mentioned, and. Uh, many others. And one of the difficult things in Japan, um, many, like the average age for a pastor in Japan is like 65 years old. So there's kind of a, a dearth of young, young pastors coming up. And so a lot of churches are without, without pastors. Um, so that just underscores the need to really equip the believers, uh, for, to do the work of the ministry and um, to really have a, a deep sense of uh, that Japan is kind of a top-down society. So a lot of people expect, you know, the pastor is going to, he's going to do all the work kind of thing. Like it's that kind of mentality because it's top-down. And so like the pastor kind of fosters that sometimes and the believers expect it. So it's kind of a vicious cycle, but that's a really important thing to train the believers um, that we're all in this ministry together. Like we're all serving the Lord and we all have a part to play. So you can pray for uh, growth in the churches. Also, you can pray for uh, Japanese pastors for both of the churches that we shared about, Abundant Life Christ Church and Azumino Family Chapel. So for the Lord's timing in that and um, just, you know, you can pray for the right, uh, the right men for those, those positions and those roles. Also, you can pray for us with uh, wisdom and parenting. Um, I shared with somebody earlier, and they said, oh, all, all your girls are teenagers now. And I was like, yeah, that's true. And that has its challenges, I guess, right? So some of you can identify with that. But um, yeah, so wisdom and, and parenting for us as we raise our girls. Also physical strength, like, uh, yeah, as we get older, and I kind of feel myself like, kind of slowing down and it's harder to get around and things like that. So you can pray for physical strength for, for us. And, um, also you can pray for our financial support. So we, we need to raise a, about $2,000 more per month to, to get the green light to go back to Japan. So you can pray for that, that the Lord would raise up those funds and in his time and time and will. And finally, our, we have a table out in the fellowship hall, uh, so you can visit that and see some, some, you know, some of the pictures and materials we have. And also, Megumi is um, like last time; she was selling uh, bracelets and earrings and stuff like that. So um, she's doing that again. And uh, her and the ladies from the church uh, made these uh, bracelets and these these uh, pieces of jewelry. And any funds that are raised from that will go to su- help support the youth ministry at the at Abundant Life Church. And um, last time, when uh, she had done the same thing, and uh, the funds for that were used to uh, for repairs at the church, and those were th- that money was used uh, to help paint the exterior of the church, which really was a, a needed thing. So we we thank thank you for helping with that. So and. Um, yeah, I just thank you so much for this time to be able to share with you. And let me go ahead and close in, close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to share about the way that you're working in Japan. And Lord, it's all you. We are not a weak, weak vessels, Lord, but you are, you have all the authority and all the power and you are building your church, Lord, uh, throughout the world. And we we are so 
so glad to be part of that and thank you for what you're doing and I just pray that you would uh Lord give all of us um just a deeper um passion to to reach people for you Lord to to make disciples whether that's here in Middletown or Monmouth County or uh, in Japan or wherever it is in the world, Lord. Uh, it's a command for all of us and help us to each have a, kind of a deeper urgency and um, awareness of, of, that, uh, of that command that you've given us. And Lord, I pray that you'll bless the work here at, at Grace Bible Fellowship and thank you for the brothers and sisters here and just uh, continue to, to grow your church, Father, and we we uh, give you all the glory, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.